And now a quick word from our sponsors here at Viral Hip Hop News. Hey man here from Viral Hip Hop News letting my people know to go grab this bottle of miracle food right now. Shopadopter.org put together some of the best ingredients on God's green earth to help your immune system, give you a cleanse and reboot that your body deserves. Don't wait for your miracle. Grab it in miracle food right now. Let's go. A Tom the Hill may be the final installment of the Lazarberry clan being recognized as a powerful force amongst the free world. Grab the House of Lazenberry at Times to Hill in the description box right now. Work. Definitely appreciate that. Shout out to, uh, you know, Comedy Hype in, in your yeah. podcast as well. I want to talk about um, the last time we had you on the show, Paul mm -hmm. Mooney hadn't passed away. Oh, now, yeah. I watched, you know, um, a couple of your videos. You talked about Paul Mooney in such a high light. Um, what did that mean to you? How did you feel when he passed away? And um, I think you had a video title somewhere along the lines, like, why people are afraid to show love to Paul Mooney. So kind of get into that, you know, your love for him, why people are afraid to show love. For Paul um, one is um, I got to know the guy uh, personally. You know, I, I hung out with him. I said, when I was a young pup in the game in L.A., when I moved to L.A., he was he was a dude out there doing his thing. Um, he was a comic. Actually, the comic the comedy clubs called the Comedy Store, which was a mecca. And they would have three different rooms. And they say one room. You know, you have like 10 comics, 12 comics going up. He'd always have to go last because he ran the, you know, the people out the room. Mm -hmm. And it was so cool, though, because he kept it so real. You know, he just sat there and, you know, on the stool and just talked about it. And what's funny is a lot of celebrities came to see him, high profile celebrities. But they was all in the corner, tucked away because they didn't want people to see, you know, see them supporting Paul Mooney. And I'm talking about some big name people and stuff. And um, I just soaked it in, man, because he said stuff that we wanted to say, but many were afraid to say. And um, and that's one of the reasons why people were, you know, didn't really show him the love he should have gotten a long time ago, because no one wants to be, a, you know, be part of a rebel rouser, man. You know, very few people want to stand up and say this is wrong or this is some foolishness, especially when it's race, you know, relation, because then you looked at as a racist. And it's like, no, sometimes you just be proud of your situation of who you are and look, you know, and say, hey, those folks over there acting a fool. Yeah. Well, I got to know him and hang out with him, man. And I, he I took me over his, you know, under his wing. And I'd listen to him. He'd tell me stories and so forth. And I got to know him in a, you know, in an intimate way. And there's, and there's rumors, but not like that, homie. But, <laughs> you know, in an intimate way where we sat and talked, okay? We did a lot of you know, talking, okay? Um, and it was just cool to, to see that. You know, I was there before, like, Chappelle, you know, brought him on. Because people, when he got on Chappelle, then the door started opening up for him in a different way. White folks started watching him uh, coming to a show. Some of them was thinking, hey, we'll see the Chappelle guy. And got their ass towed up about racism. But he was just a dude that said stuff. And I remember I gave him a little nickname. I told him he was the cocaine of comedy. He said, oh, what does that mean? What does that mean? I'm like, because everybody doing it, but don't know why I want to mention it and talk about it. Word. Not cocaine, but what I'm just saying, you get what I'm saying. Um, and it was just cool to hear him. Now, he was an ass. Yes, he was an ass at times. Trust me, he had a standoffish personality. He didn't let too many people get close to him. That's what made it even feel more special to get a chance to you know, get close to him. I wrote a book. Uh, where's my book at? Right here, real quick. I wrote a book right here. It's called my it's called my 100 homies and phonies of Hollywood. You get on Amazon if you want to. But look, look who's look who it's forward by. My man, Paul Mooney. You feel what I'm saying? So, and, um, he, you know, he, he, he even kept it real in my forward. OK, I'm asking him to forward my damn book. I mean, forward is when somebody says something nice to you and so forth. Uh, let me read a quick thing about what he said in my forward to my book. OK, I'm like, he said, for starters, a nigga named Pierre is already phony. Okay, my book today, my 100 homies and phonies. Are phonies okay? damn. I know, damn, off the rip. This way, and I'm so, I keep it 100. I don't edit shit out. I put the up, like, what do you, you say? I'm going to put in. He said, for starters, a nigga named Pierre is already phony. And I hope this book isn't as phony. Uh, he is an, this, this is the opportunist. I remember meeting a light skinned nigga years ago. He thought he was white. I don't know why he thought that, but he, he was trying to pass for white, and I had to break his face and tell him who he was. I mean, if Pierre doesn't become famous, it won't be good because he didn't try. Because he tried to steal fame. He did everything. He can actually sell a refrigerator to an Eskimo. He's about the slickest nigga I've ever met. I hope this book does well because he deserves a bestseller. He really does because he's a best bestseller. He sells himself to anyone. He, he plays this humble pie bullshit like he wouldn't hurt a fly. He actually reminds me of a white serial killer. He bears, he bears watching. Um, but the good thing is he got talent and he's, and he's got a lot of, and a lot of bullshit. As Paul Mooney, I'm happy for him, and I'm happy for, I'm happy if you buy the book. Thank you so much. You know, thank you. So that's mm. what he wrote about me. You know what I'm saying? That's how. That's raw. You know what I'm saying? That's raw. When a nigga tell you to your book, you know, you ain't shit. You know, but he loved me though. You know, he got a lot of love for me. So, 
So that was it. Yeah. So I, I enjoyed um, giving this eulogy. They call it a eulogy, but when I spoke on social media, you can look around, might find it on, on online. But um, within like a week, man, I actually got like seven hundred thousand views. I was, I, you know, sometimes you don't know what's popular, what's gonna hit. Yeah, right. connected with people emotionally, I guess. And I was like, that's cool, man. You know, kind of just to bridge the gap between then and now. And I'm not, I'm not referring to Paul Mooney's death as then. I'm talking. Hit, pop, hit, pop, shit, hit, pop, hit. Bars is back. Hit, pop, Sam hit, and pop. Oh God, hit, pop. What's hit, up with you? I done watched them niggas do interview after interview They not culture vultures, the culture something they been into So if you never gave them a view, I recommend you do Cause when they question guests, they message is not subliminal It don't matter if you a rookie